Hello, I'd like to welcome you to school for your total joint replacement here at Alice Peck Day Memorial Hospital. The goal of Total Joint Replacement School is to help prepare our patients and their support person for surgery. We want to prepare you mentally, physically, functionally, and emotionally as all of these will play a part in your recovery. We want to help improve your outcome and your satisfaction with your experience here with us at APD. However, we want our patients to understand that the hardest work starts after surgery is completed. Masks are required when entering the APD building. If you are in a room on the med surge unit and or the short stay unit by yourself, you are allowed to remove your masks. When you are in the hallways or areas with other patients and staff, you must keep your mask on properly at all times. In response to COVID-19, we adjust our visitor policies often. Please view our website for current information on mask and visitor policies. Jumping right into it, things that I want you to be aware of that you need to call us for right away when they take place prior to surgery are the following. If you develop a fever of 100.5 or greater, a cold or flu with a productive cough, any type of skin infection, rash, scratch, cut, or opening, any urinary burning or frequency, we need to know about it as soon as possible. This is going to help us to be able to prevent your surgery from getting canceled, postponed, or delayed. The sooner we know about these issues, the more time we have to help correct them prior to surgery to help prevent you from having your surgery canceled. Also, smoking cessation. Smoking can increase your risk of infection after surgery, so we ask that you please stop smoking prior to surgery. Please talk to your primary care provider about smoking cessation support so that they can help you stop smoking completely prior to surgery. Things we're going to talk about as we go through the school today are simple interventions we use to help prevent surgical complications. Things such as minimizing risk of infection, preventing blood clots, preventing respiratory complications. Please remember that we use a team approach to your care you need to remember that you're the leader of that team. So please voice your opinions and your feelings. We want to know what's going on. That team is going to include yourself as the leader, your surgeon, their PA, nurses, several key players are on your team. And what we want to do is make sure that this is a win. Things we do to help minimize risk of infection have to do with what's known as mupiracin. At the time of scheduling your surgery, you're going to be prescribed a nasal antibiotic known as mupiracin. You're going to use this twice a day for five days prior to surgery. Your actual day of surgery is day six. You can put this in your nose on day six as well. A few things to note. This medication will say not to be used nasally. This is okay to put into your nose. Please know that a COVID test is going to be performed prior to your surgery and that it will be performed after you start using the mupiracin ointment and it is okay to have a COVID test while using mupiracin. A prescription for mupiracin is going to be sent to your pharmacy electronically and will be ready for pickup. At your consent signing visit, we're going to give you what's known as Hibiclans. This is an antibacterial scrub and solution that we're going to ask you to use. We ask you to use this twice. We want you to shower with this, using it as a body wash, once the night before surgery, and then we ask that you get up early enough the morning of surgery to use it again. You're allowed to use your own shampoo and face wash. However, we want you to use the Hibiclans as a body wash, and we want you to use it twice. Don't go try to buy this. We will give this to you. We ask that you do not shave your surgical side for at least five days prior to surgery. The reason being is we will take care of that for you when you come in. And we don't want you to accidentally cut or nick yourself, creating an opening where bacteria can get in and an infection can start because that will cause your surgery to be canceled. Please note that after showering the night before surgery, you are not to apply any deodorants, body lotions, or oils. We don't want you to have anything on your body that we did not know about as that can be dangerous. We also ask that you please remove all nail polish and jewelry. This includes fingernail polish, toenail polish, and wedding rings.
These are things that are common sense, but we want to reiterate. Please use clean towels after you shower. Please put on clean clothes and please change your bed sheets as they can harbor bugs and bacteria. After you shower with our antimicrobial scrub, we want to make sure that you do the best you can to prevent any further possibility of increasing your risk of infection. Please note, you are not to have any dental work, including cleanings, for one month before surgery. You will also not be allowed to have any dental work for six months after your total joint replacement surgery. You may need to take a dental antibiotic if you have a dental emergency within the first six months after surgery. We will help to take care of that. If you are a diabetic or immunocompromised patient, you may need to take dental antibiotics for the lifetime of your joint replacement patient. If you are not sure if you are supposed to have dental antibiotics for your dental appointments, please call the office and speak with the nurse. We will help run you through an algorithm that tells us whether or not you will need dental antibiotics every time you go to the dentist. Per the orthopedic surgeons here at Alice Peck Day Memorial Hospital, you should not receive any vaccines, including the COVID-19 vaccine, a flu vaccine, shingles or tetanus, within two weeks prior to your surgery. It is recommended that you get your flu or COVID shot at least two weeks before surgery. If you do not get these vaccines prior to surgery, that is okay because you will be allowed to get them any time after surgery. Everyone who is scheduled for a total joint replacement is going to be scheduled for a COVID-19 test. We are going to help set that appointment up for you, but you are required to get tested for COVID-19 72 to 96 hours before your surgical date. Again, we will help organize this for you and you will have a scheduled appointment. However, if you develop any of the following symptoms on this slide, please note to call our office immediately as we will test you for COVID-19 based on these symptoms as we wanna know this as soon as possible. Please also note that you must have a negative result in order to proceed with your scheduled surgery. A DVT, also known as a deep vein thrombosis, is also known as a blood clot. These can develop after surgery. If a blood clot travels to your lungs, it can be called a PE or pulmonary embolism and these can be very dangerous. After surgery, things hurt. You're not moving around as much as you normally would. Therefore, blood circulation slows down and can pool up. So we want to do everything we can to help prevent that from happening. What we do during surgery is we help put on what are known as venodynes. This is a device that's going to be applied to your lower extremities. You may never know that they were on because they'll be placed once you are in the OR and then they usually come off while you're in recovery. Venodynes are a machine that are hooked up to air. They're going to blow up and compress down, pushing blood up. Then they deflate, letting the blood go back down, which helps keep circulation moving for you during the surgery. After surgery, the best thing you can do for yourself to help prevent a blood clot is to get up and move. Walk, walk, walk. Early ambulation helps promote circulation. That gets the blood flowing and that's gonna prevent it from pooling, which will prevent you from getting a blood clot. As you're recovering, you'll have enough things to deal with that you do not wanna to have to worry about a blood clot. When you're here at the hospital with us, physical therapy and occupational therapy are helping you to move, asking you to get up, asking you to do things, and we can help to control that. However, when you go home, we don't have as much control. Our patients tend to find their spot on the couch and can plop themselves there and don't get up as much as they should. Because of that, we want to use an anticoagulant medication that's going to help prevent a blood clot as we don't have as much control when you leave the hospital. Our patients are going to be on Coumadin, Eliquis, Xeralto, or Aspirin. You will be on one of the four. You ask yourself, well, how do I know which medication I'll be on? We're going to prescribe that for you, but if you have any of the following, you will be on Coumadin or Eliquis. If you have a personal history of a blood clot or family history of a blood clot, you'll be on Coumadin or Eliquis. If you've had a personal history of cancer within the last two years, you'll be on Coumadin or Eliquis. And if you have an allergy to baby aspirin, you'll be on Coumadin or Eliquis. If your answers to those questions were no, you haven't had any of that, you'll be on a baby aspirin twice a day after surgery. 
each of these medications that you will be prescribed, you will be on for four weeks following surgery. After surgery, you can have respiratory complications develop due to all the fluids that you receive through your IV or your intravenous line. Due to that, we want to help keep your lungs clear. So when you wake up, you may notice on your bedside table this little device. This is known as an incentive spirometer, also called an IS. What this does is a doctor is going to ask you to do it, and it's going to help you take a deep breath. But what it really does is it's going to cause you to cough, and it's going to help clear those lungs and prevent you from having pneumonia or a post-op atelectasis. Patients that have a history of sleep apnea or asthma, you are asked to please bring your CPAP and BiPAP machines with you as they will be utilized while you're here in the hospital with us. And those that have asthma, please bring your inhalers. This should be the only medication that, of your own that you need to bring to the hospital. This works us up to the week before surgery. So what I want you to know is that you are all scheduled to have a PAT, a pre-admission testing phone call. This is a phone call with a nurse that works in our surgical department who's going to gather lots of information about you for our anesthesia team. They're going to ask you about your medical history, family history, surgical history, and what current medications you are taking. You're going to receive a letter in the mail that tells you when this phone call is, and it's going to instruct you to call on a certain date and time. It is the patient's responsibility to call us during that date and time that are listed. During this phone call, you will receive a lot of important information, such as which medications you should take the morning of surgery and which medications that you should not take the morning of surgery. We also um, ask that you do not bring any medications unless instructed to do so, as we have a pharmacy here that will supply you with everything except those inhalers that I said previously. If the PAT nurse has asked you to bring any of your own medications because our pharmacy does not supply them, please make sure you bring them in the original bottle so we know what they are and that they were for you. Everyone wants to know, what time is my surgery? When should I be there? Unfortunately, because the OR changes so regularly, there's add-ons, delays, emergency cases, we cannot confirm the time of your surgery until the night before your surgery between 3 and 4 p.m. You will receive a phone call. If you do not answer, a message will be left that will instruct you what time we need you to arrive to the hospital. This is important, so please remember, nothing to eat after midnight the night before surgery. You may consume 16 ounces of clear liquids four hours prior to your arrival time, but be careful and make sure you know what clear liquids are. If you have questions about what they are, please call the office and the nurse will help to instruct you. Gentlemen, please note that we do not want you to take Viagra the night before surgery. If you do that, unfortunately, this will cause your surgery to be canceled. When arriving for surgery on the day of surgery, please go to the main entrance. You will need to come in by yourself as you will not be allowed to have a support person with you in the pre-op area. You will go to the main entrance, you will follow the signs to registration and get checked in. At that time, you'll be instructed to go to the lobby where a nurse from same day surgery and also known as the pre-op area will come and get you and bring you back so you can get prepped for surgery. Pre-op or same day surgery is the department in the hospital where you are prepared for your surgery. You will be working with nurses that work with anesthesia and the surgeons. This does not mean that you will be going home the same day, so don't be alarmed. We ask that when you arrive, please arrive without jewelry, no makeup, no contact lenses, no nail polish of any kind anywhere, including acrylics, gel nails, or fake nails. Please know we can store removable dental work, hearing aids, and eyeglasses for you, and that your belongings will be transported to your room on the med surge floor. You will then be asked to undress and place on the provided hospital gown and socks. At this time, we're going to pull that curtain back and get to work. Your surgical site will be clipped free of the excess hair you've been letting grow for five days as you haven't shaved, and we'll perform another antimicrobial scrub, not of your whole body as you have done, but from your hip to your toes of the surgical side. A nurse will then take vital signs, do a complete assessment, and start your IV, which will have fluid at this time running through. You will then be handed a marker and asked to put your initials on your surgical side. 
your surgeon is also going to put their initials next to your initials showing that you both agree which side the surgery is being performed on so that there are no mistakes made. Once these things have been completed, you're going to meet your operating room nurse. They come by and confirm a lot of that information that you gave to us during our PAT call. See how everything's kind of coming together? They're going to ask you questions and ask you to provide the telephone number of your support person so that way we have that so we can contact them with the updates. After, your surgeon and physician assistant should come by. They're going to confirm the surgery, review your health information and the consent that you signed with them, write their initials on your surgical side and answer any last minute questions that you might have. This is followed by the anesthesia provider. They're going to come by and review your health information, explain to you the options for anesthesia, talk to you about what they think the best plan for you might be, answer any questions, and have you sign a consent for anesthesia. That is why up to this point you will not receive any medications. We need you to be 100% with it in order to legally sign that consent for anesthesia. The different types of anesthesia for this procedure are known as a spinal anesthesia with MAC or general anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia is where you're going to be numb from the waist down. Where it says with MAC, M-A-C, monitored anesthesia care, that means you will also be asleep but you will be breathing on your own. General anesthesia, you will not have a spinal, you will be put to sleep but also have a breathing tube and the breathing will be done for you. These are the different types of anesthesia that are offered that anesthesia will explain to you when they come and see you that morning. In addition to having either a spinal or general anesthesia, you will receive IV medications to help you relax, as well as local anesthetic to help keep your surgical site comfortable. Why is spinal anesthesia a good choice? Let me explain. You have excellent pain relief after surgery. You're gonna wake up and feel like a rock star because you're not gonna feel anything. Remember, you're numb from the waist down. You have less need for strong pain relieving medications because you wake up comfortable from the spinal. You have less nausea and vomiting because you don't receive the gases and extra medications that can come with a general anesthesia. You have an earlier return to eating and drinking and less confusion after surgery. After you and anesthesia have decided on your plan and you've signed your consent, at this time you will receive your first low dose of IV sedation. This is a medication called Versed. We like to call it liquid courage. It's not going to put you out, but it's going to help relax you and help you forget your trip to the OR. We will then transport you to the OR and you will be assisted to sit on the bedside of the OR table. Reason being is if you have a spinal anesthetic, the spinal is performed once you are in the OR by the anesthesiologist. This will take place, then they will position you, give you some more medications that will help you to fall asleep, and then you will be scrubbed again in a sterile environment, prepped and draped and ready for surgery. Please note that bladder scans are completed to determine the possibility of urine retention. We no longer are automatically placing Foley catheters for our total joint replacement patients. You will have a spinal and spinal does numb you from the waist down. Therefore, it puts your bladder to sleep so you are unable to urinate on your own. During surgery, you have an IV and that allows us to put fluid in through and that fluid needs to be able to come out. Therefore, if your bladder scan showing you are retaining a lot of urine, we are going to perform what is known as a straight cath. This is where we are going to help to get that urine out. And these will occur uh, roughly for the first 24 hours to decrease the infection risk after surgery. Once normal bladder function is regained, which happens after the spinal has worn off, these straight catheterizations will stop. Please also note that sometimes urinary incontinence is not uncommon after surgery. Um, if you are having difficulty being able to urinate on your own, a Foley may be placed after the fact, but we want you to be aware of this. And if you need a Foley, it's usually in less than 24 hours. Please note, while we are preparing you in the operating room and getting you ready for surgery, it can take about 45 minutes. Then surgery will begin. Once that happens, the OR nurse will contact your support person at the telephone number you gave us while you were in the pre-op area. And then they will also be called again towards completion so that they are kept in the loop. 
After surgery is completed, you will wake up and you will be in what is known as the PACU, the Post Anesthesia Care Unit, also known as the recovery room. While you wake up there, you're going to be fully monitored. You'll have oxygen applied to your face. You will have IV fluids and medications given to you. And you will have ice applied to your hip or your knee. You will also have a nurse nearby who will be there to answer any questions and help reorient you. As you recover in the PACU, your surgeon's going to call your support person through that telephone number that you gave us. Let us know how surgery went, what he did, um, and how things are, and how you're doing. So that way they are kept in the loop. As you recover in the PACU, the post-anesthesia care unit, you then will be transitioned back to your room in the hospital. If you had a spinal anesthesia, this transition usually takes place pretty quickly because you wake up out of anesthesia rather nicely and quickly. You feel great because you're not feeling any pain because your spinal is working and we want to get you ready to be in your own space. If you had a general anesthesia, sometimes that recovery in the post anesthesia care unit can take a little bit longer, so we want you to be aware of that. Once you get to your room, you're going to see people like your surgeons, your PAs, nurses, and all sorts of people. But don't be worried, there's no quiz on names. Once you get to your room, your nursing care team is going to be made of registered nurses, licensed nursing assistants, the RN clinical manager, as well as physical therapy, occupational therapy, and care management. When you're here with us in the hospital, we have several goals that we want to achieve. We want to keep you safe, keep you comfortable as possible, and promote rehab and physical therapy. Things that we want you to keep in mind, because the floor or med surge or the short stay unit, they all can be busy places. There's bells, there's lights, there's people, there's constant motion, and there's a lot going on. So please consider bringing headphones or a sleep mask for rest. Please note that the average length of stay is likely to be one to three days after surgery is completed. However, some patients will go home the same day. Case management is going to visit you while you are here with us to discuss the possibility of VNA services as well as physical therapy in your home. We want to help give you the things that you will need to be successful after surgery and also have a safe transition home from the hospital. Please use the call button every time you need to get up and use the restroom, need to move, drop something you want to pick up, notice a spill, or have any question. The call bell is your friend. When you hit that call bell, you're going to get a nurse to come in and help you do what you need. We don't want you doing it on your own as you have had a spinal anesthesia and we want to make sure that you are fully capable and thought out before you try to do things without assistance. Never go to the bathroom alone. Do not lean on furniture that has wheels. Wear your hospital socks and safe shoes at all times. Please make sure you wear your glasses or hearing aids if you have them and you're awake. And please rise slowly and check for lightheadedness before continuing to get up or moving forward. Please note that we will use a gate belt throughout your stay for safety purposes on all patients regardless of your activity level. Please understand that this is a requirement. If you see a provider not using a gate belt, please bring it to their attention as is, it is needed for all patients. You must be cleared for physical therapy for independent movement in your room before you're up and at them on your own. Again, which is why we want you to call and not fall. The next topic I'm going to discuss has to do with pain management. Pain management is effectively controlling your pain while allowing you to actively participate in therapeutic treatments and activities. What does this mean? This means that we want to help keep you comfortable in order to do the things that we are asking you to do. We want you to be comfortable doing them. So please know it can take one and a half to six hours or more for feeling and sensation to return to the area of the body that is numb after a spinal anesthesia. This is going to vary patient to patient. As anesthesia begins to wear off, you will notice some tingling or some sensations returning. That means you might be able to wiggle a toe or move your foot. As that happens, we want you to tell your nurse right away. Do not wait to be able to move your whole leg before you let your nurse know because then you're already behind the pain. The goal here is to always stay ahead of the pain 
and stay on top of it. So the moment you start to notice some movement, please tell your nurse. I can't stress this enough. Please note that tingling and numbness around your incision site may occur for even a year after surgery. This is common and to be expected. You'll be asked more times than you can count while you're here to rate your pain on a scale of 0 to 10. 0 being no pain, 10 being the worst possible pain. I need you to remember you're having a total joint replacement surgery. This is a big surgery, a large surgery, and you will have pain. I want you to understand that. We're going to do our best to control your pain, but you will not be without. We want to keep you somewhere around the three to four mark so it's tolerable and you're able to still do things. If it's getting higher than that, that's a problem. That means we need to make some changes with your pain management plan. So please let us know and communicate that with us as we want to work with you to help keep you comfortable. You will be prescribed pain medication that will be sent directly to your pharmacy. The prescriptions will be sent to your pharmacy upon your discharge from the hospital. Prescriptions for post-operative pain medication are not sent in ahead of time as we like to have a chance to know what it is that will work for you and what you will need while you're in the hospital with us. Therefore, your prescriptions are going to be sent to the pharmacy upon discharge from your stay here at APD. Please make sure you call the orthopedic clinic for any pain medication refills or send us a message through my DH. It is important that you call us before you are out of the medication to make sure that we can get it to you in a timely manner. We want to help control your pain and help you to stay ahead of the pain. Therefore, you need to let us know that you need a refill before you are out of the medication. As you recover and you start to use less medication and or don't need your medication anymore, we get lots of questions on how to properly dispose of unused medication. The clinic can provide you with a disposal bag at your follow-up appointment, but please make sure that you ask the nurse to do so and or call us at the clinic and we will help to get you what you need. Please know you will have a water-resistant bandage that will be placed over your surgical incision. This bandage is going to remain on for five days and it will be changed on day five and then left on for an additional five days. On day 10, you may remove this bandage and leave your incision open to air. Dr. Tomek patients will have a clear mesh material that will stay on their incision for four weeks after surgery. This will be underneath the water-resistant bandage. When the mesh material starts to peel, you may trim the edges, but try to keep it on for as close to four weeks as possible. Please make sure, this is important, that you are discharged home from the hospital with a bandage to perform your bandage change on day five. Do not leave without letting them give you a bandage to perform this. VNA services, if you have them at home, will help you with your bandage change. Please know that if you are having a problem and it is after hours or on the weekend, that we have an after hour on-call service through our orthopedic clinic here at APD. The number is 603-442-5630. There is always an orthopedic provider on call. You will call that number, leave your information, name, number, and your problem. The on-call service will page our provider, give them your information, and our provider will call you directly. It is somebody who is here working at APD in orthopedics that has access to your chart and information so that we can take care of you. Please know there is no driving for at least one month, four weeks after surgery. There are many reasons behind this, so we ask that you please plan accordingly. You should not operate a vehicle while taking pain medication. All of you are scheduled to have a follow-up appointment one month after surgery. And if things are going as planned and your recovery is looking good, you will all be given the green light to drive at that appointment. Please take note, when traveling after surgery, if you have questions about going on long car rides or flights, please know that you may go for a ride after surgery as long as you are the passenger. You may go for a ride if you're feeling up to it at any time. Air travel will be at the discretion of your surgeon due to the high risk of blood clots. So please ask your surgeon at your one month follow up if you are planning to travel by plane. If you do decide to go for a drive and you are the passenger going for a ride, you should plan 
to make sure you are stopping every one and a half to two hours if this is a long car ride. You need to plan to stand, stretch, and walk during those breaks to make sure you're promoting circulation and preventing yourself from developing a blood clot. Things that I want you to know about for over-the-counter medications. So as you're recovering from surgery, the last thing you want to deal with on top of surgical pain and recovery is constipation. Therefore, we ask that you get both of these medications that are over-the-counter. You will not get a prescription for these, but we do ask you to pick them up and use them. One is Colace, that is a tablet. You're gonna take one tablet twice a day. The other is known as Miralax, this is a powder. You're gonna take a cap full of the powder and put it in a drink of your choice and drink that every day as well. You're gonna do this while you're taking the pain medication after surgery. The pain medication can be constipating, so the reason we want to try to help keep you regular and keep you going is by using this medication. Please note, if you have sleeplessness, that we ask that you talk to your primary care physician if you feel that you need a sleeping aid as we in orthopedics will not be prescribing that. However, if you develop muscle spasms, which if you do, those are a good thing because those are signs of recovery and getting better, to please call our office and speak to your nurse. Let us know that you're having muscle spasms. We will then help prescribe you a muscle relaxant to help get over the hump with those as they develop. Disability and FMLA. If you are employed and working, we please need you to contact your HR department and request any paperwork that they need us to fill out. You're gonna bring that paperwork to the office, we're gonna fill it out, we'll have the surgeon sign it, and we're gonna give it back to you so you can get it to your employer so it can go where it needs to go. The important key here is to make sure that you still get a paycheck and then have documentation from your surgeon for your reason for being out of work. We're now going into the physical and occupational therapy portion of our joint school presentation. So again, the purpose of total joint replacement is to remove damaged bone of the joint and replace it with a smooth artificial implant known as a prosthesis. This is being done to prevent the bones from rubbing together and to provide a smooth joint which in return is going to prevent you from having the pain that you are currently experiencing. Physical therapy is going to focus on muscles that will help with walking, reaching, standing, and physical activities. Physical therapy is going to help you with using a walker, learning to climb stairs. They're gonna help create a home exercise program for you while you are here. They're gonna help you to get around by yourself. And they're also going to help make sure that your new joints can support your entire body weight over time so that way you're not using the walker for any longer than you have to. Remember, some pain is expected following surgery. We ask that you stay on schedule with your pain medications and use them as prescribed and always stay ahead of your pain. If the pain gets ahead of you, it's hard to get back ahead of it and playing catch up is not fun. Goals of physical therapy while you're here with us in order to be discharged home are gonna to be to make sure that you can independently move from your bed to a standing position we want to make sure you're able to transfer yourself from the toilet, the chair, things of that nature. Make sure that you have uh, independent home access and will be okay on your own, as well as have a home exercise program you can do to help strengthen and move those joints and help with range of motion, flexion, and extension. You may shower 48 hours after your surgery while the water-resistant bandage is in place. Please know that there is to be no swimming, no pools, no hot tubs, no tub baths, no submerging your incision for four weeks after surgery. We wanna make sure it's fully healed to reduce any risk of infection. Please note the following lifting guidelines following your surgery and we ask that you follow them. No lifting more than 10 pounds for the first month. No lifting more than 20 pounds for the second month no lifting more than 30 pounds for the third month, and then after completion of the third month, there are no restrictions thereafter. We ask that you perform 15 to 20 minutes of activity daily, including exercise from your home exercise program and or physical therapy when they either come to your house or at outpatient physical therapy. 
We then ask that you take 40 to 45 minutes of sitting and relaxing while icing with your feet elevated to help reduce any swelling that may be caused from that. Please note that swelling will take place for up to a year after surgery. Swelling, the more that you do, the more swelling you may notice that will subside, but there is extra fluid that is created during this surgery, and it takes a while for the body to absorb that. You may also notice bruising after surgery in places that the surgery was not necessarily performed. Please do not be alarmed. Bruising is going to work its way down your leg by gravity, and then all that fluid will end up in your foot. You may notice that your foot swells up like a balloon, and this is also normal. Do not be alarmed. We just want to make sure you are aware of these things, as not everybody will know this. Occupational therapy, also known as OT, is going to help you as a patient achieve independence after surgery. We want to help improve your ability to perform ADLs, also known as activities of daily living. ADLs are the following, dressing and grooming yourself, bathing, toileting task, general recovery, functional mobility, and discharge planning. These are all things that occupational therapy is going to help you make sure you can do on your own. Things to help you do this are known as adaptive equipment, and these are all things that you may be able to obtain. These are the following. A long shoehorn to help you get your shoes on, a sock aid to help get your socks on, a long handled sponge to help you with bathing and getting to those hard to reach places, elastic laces, uh, as well as a dressing stick, a front wheeled walker and a walker basket, a commode, a handheld shower, a tub or a shower chair are all things that are going to be helpful for you after surgery. These are not required that you get them, but they are recommended and there are ways for obtaining this equipment. You can do this by calling local senior centers, Lions Clubs, Legions in your area. Um, several of them either rent them out or let you borrow them. Also, if you have family members or friends who have had previous total joint replacement surgeries may have these things. You can always go on Amazon. They have great prices. And there are also several online sites that sell hip and knee kits where you can grab some of this adaptive equipment that's going to help you as you recover. Things that you can do in home to help prepare yourself for surgery are the following. We ask that you remove all throw rugs and or trip hazards. You can help um, by creating pre-cooked meals or easy to prepare meals or things that are frozen that you can easily throw in the oven so you're not having to be spend long amounts of time in the kitchen. Uh, please place items that you need regularly in easy to reach places. Uh, please move furniture around to make sure you can get around easily with your walker and won't get stuck or bump into things. We want to prevent you from falling at home and we want to make sure that you can be independent and do things on your own so that you're not dependent on somebody being with you at all times. On the day that you arrive to the hospital for your surgery, we ask that you please bring your front wheeled walker with you. Physical therapy is going to work with you to set it for your appropriate height. Please bring any adaptive equipment with you that you have obtained, bought, or borrowed so that occupational therapy can work with you to show you how to use it properly and effectively. Please bring loose fitting clothing as well as supportive shoes. And most importantly, please bring the measurements of common seating areas in your home, such as your couch or chair, but also your bed. So that way we know how far you'll be getting up from your bed to a standing position or even your toilet. It's nice to know so that we can practice these things with you while you're here with us. So when you get home, you'll be comfortable doing them on your own. In closing, there are a few key points that I want to recap. Please remember, you are not to get any vaccines two weeks before surgery. You are not to have any dental work one month before surgery. The night before surgery after you shower, please do not apply any deodorants, creams, lotions, or oils to your body. Gentlemen, the night before surgery, please do not take Viagra. 
please do not have any nail polish or toe polish on when you come to the hospital. Remember not to eat after midnight the night before surgery. And please do not drink for four hours prior to your arrival time before surgery. Remember there is no swimming, pools, hot tubs, or soaking of any kind for four weeks after surgery. You will not be allowed to drive for four weeks after surgery. And if you have questions about flying, please make sure that you talk to your physician about that. Things to remember. Your nasal antibiotic will be sent to your pharmacy. Remember, it is okay to use this even though you will be getting a COVID test. Hibiclens is going to be given to you. You do not need to buy it. Remember, you will all be scheduled to have a COVID-19 test 72 to 96 hours prior to your surgery, and you need to have a negative result. Remember to bring earbuds, headphones, face masks, durable medical equipment, and supportive shoes with you. Remember to always use your call button, call don't fall, and please make sure you check the website at alicepeckday.org for up-to-date information and any changes to our visitor policy. If you have any questions following this video and presentation, please make sure that you contact the appropriate nurse for your surgeon to ask them to fill in any gaps, answer any questions this has created, and or give you any more information that you are looking for. Dr. Hood patients can call 603-308-0449. Dr. Lynn patients can call 603-308-0425. And Dr. Tomek patients can call 603 603- 308-0425. We have a great team of nurses and we are looking forward to your call and answering any and all of your questions. I want to thank you for spending time with me during this presentation and I know that you have choices for your health care and I thank you for choosing APD.